The Nintendo Game Boy came out in 1989, which means this year marks the 35th anniversary of the Game Boy, my favorite video game console. And I thought it'd be fun to talk a little bit about the first 35 games I ever owned for the Game Boy. Um, yeah, maybe talk about my history with them a little bit and uh, maybe give a little review. And 35 games is kind of a lot, so I'll probably keep it short. But uh, yeah, let's dive in. So the first game I got was Tetris. No surprise there. Came It uh, came bundled with the console. Let's see, I saved up, uh, I think, like nine or ten months. I saved up all my money, every dollar, every cent, uh, until I could get the Game Boy. And it came with Tetris. And uh, because it took me so long to save up, it was a long time before I had enough money to, to buy a second game. And uh, <laughs> it, it, I, this was probably the only game I had for many months. And honestly, I didn't even, it didn't even bother me because this one game is so good and so much fun. I just played it all the time. The next game I got for my birthday was Super Mario Land. Um, I love this game. I still love this game. Uh, let's see. I honestly prefer it to over the sequel, uh, Super Mario Land 2. Uh, just because I think it's a short, short and sweet, uh, adventure with a really good, uh, um, difficulty curve starts off pretty easy and then slowly gets more difficult until you get to the end. It's not too long, full of good challenges. Yeah. Really solid game. The third game I got, oh my gosh. So I went to the store. This was what, 1990. Oh, the first two games came out. They were launch titles. They came out in 1989. So now in the nineties, <laughs> in the 90s so this was before before i started using the internet um yeah you know back before i got uh, dial-up internet and so online reviews weren't a big thing uh all we had to rely on was if we're lucky like video game magazines and but more often you just went to the store look at the wall of games see what uh see what box art looks good and then say oh hey I know that, whatever, Jurassic Park, I like dinosaurs, whatever, I like the movie, and get that or whatever. So the next game I got, I got <laughs> uh, Skate or Die, Bad and Rad. Um, this game, I think I recognized the Skate or Die branding from the NES games, and I thought, oh, they always look cool in the magazines. I got this game, and oh man, I was, honestly, I was really disappointed. Um... It's just because it was not what I was expecting. Uh, it's less a skateboarding game and more like a, I guess today, nowadays they're called runner games where you're just going full speed, almost like Geometry Dash, where you're going full speed and you have to press a button at just the right time in just the right places to get over all these obstacles and challenges. That's pretty much what the game is. Um, I still played it a lot, even though it wasn't what I wanted. It was still really high quality. It was a really high quality game. Really well made by Konami. Oh, well, anyway, I talked enough about that one. The next game I got was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Fall of the Foot Clan. The first game, Ninja Turtles games for the Game Boys. I love the Ninja Turtles. As a child of the 90s, I'm going to end up saying that a lot. As a child of the 90s, I love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This game I loved. I still love. I would happily play this right now. It's one of my favorite games for the Game Boy. Uh, both these games, uh, Skater Die and Ninja Turtles, oh, both made by Konami, um, they do this wonderful thing for portable games where when you start up the game, you can choose which stage you want to start on. Um, <laughs> and uh, this game, Ninja Turtles, uh, so why would anyone pay the earlier stages if you can just skip to the later stages? Um, well, because... Well, in this game, it's cool. The, the more stages you play, the earlier you start in the game, start in stage one, uh, the longer the ending is. Very clever idea. Like, the longer the cutscene is, the more the more you get to see at the end. And, of course, the other obvious benefit of playing more stages <laughs> is that the game's fun. The more game you get to play. So, I love this game. It's just a simple walking beat-em-up. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> oh, gosh. The fifth game is uh nemesis here the game boy version of gradius 
<laughs> also by Konami. I guess I had Nintendo, Nintendo, and then Konami, Konami, Konami. <laughs> games made by this company. Um, all of these Konami games have absolutely outstanding soundtracks uh, and are extremely high quality in regards to their programming. Like the way they were made, no bugs, really solid, feel good to control, really well made. This game, I, I don't even know if I ever beat the first stage. I, I got it because, like, it, it was talked a lot about in video game magazines, and people talked about the Gradius series and how good it was. I like shooters, but I am absolutely terrible at them. And so I think that's why I never really did very much with it. Um, it's one of those games I intend to go back to someday, and as an adult now, and try, give them a fair, give them a good try again. And actually, I have the sequel too now that I bought more recently, and it's also a lot of fun. It looks like a lot of fun. All right, so all those are all the games I bought back in the day from the '90s. So next up is 1991. It's a huge stack of games. The first one, I don't remember what order I got these in, so this is just alphabetical order. And the first one in alphabetical order is Aerostar. I forgot this game existed. Aerostar, oh my goodness, is once again, so similar to similar to Nemesis or Gradius, uh, Aerostar is a spaceship shooter game. I guess technically it's not a spaceship. Anyway, it's another, you're in a ship and you shoot things. It's automatically scrolling. Uh, this one is vertical, so you're moving up the screen and shooting all the enemies as they come down at you. This game has a clever mechanic where there's two planes of gameplay. There's two fields of gameplay. You're on the ground, and you're driving on the ground, and it, you can uh, hold a button to hover in the air for a brief amount of time. You can hover above bullets, you can hover above enemies, you can hover uh, like over, uh, what is it, P pools of water, stuff like that, over terrain. And, but there's also bullets in the air sometimes you have to dodge, and there's good power-ups. <laughs> it's so cool, and it looks great, and for whatever reason, similar to this last game, I just never really played it. Um... I actually loaded it up uh, a couple weeks ago and played it again for the first time in a long time. And I'm going to have to do a full review on this sometime. It's a very well-made game, but there's, uh, I don't know, I guess it never really hooked me, despite how clever it is. Yeah. But anyway, it's cool. <laughs> All right, what's next? Oh my gosh. As a child of the 90s, of course I have Bart Simpson, Escape from Camp Dudley, The Simpsons. This game kind of freaked me out it has a very stressful atmosphere to it i replayed this like last week for the first time in forever and actually beat it for the first time with no cheats no save states and it was surprisingly a lot of fun i always thought this game was impossibly hard uh someone online said it's actually not that hard if you just uh if you just go slow and i went slow and it actually wasn't that hard it's a little clunky but well, I guess you'll wait to see my review. You can wait to see my review. Um, <laughs> I called it, I think it's one of the best retro Simpsons games. Uh, yeah, kind of fun. All right, Battletoads. <laughs> so this is not a port of the NES game. Uh, I bought this because I knew the NES game was was good. I didn't have the NES game, but uh, you know it was, a, it was a it became a popular brand that was known for being a good game, a hard game, of course, but a good game. And uh, <laughs> so I bought this game, and I enjoyed playing it quite a bit. Not too surprising. I cannot get very far in it, but when I do pick it up, um, I've actually played this more than some of these other. Uh, well, some of the other games I've had I've showed so far, like Aerostar, the last game. I've played this much more than Aerostar. I can't get too far in it. Uh, as an adult now, I can get farther in it. And uh, but yeah, oh my gosh, it's actually uh, and it's and it's quite fun. I do have fun with this game. I can make it now to the the stage with the <laughs> the brain ball. I think it's called. If you've played this game, you'll know what I'm talking about. And I hate that stage. Oh my gosh, well, I don't know if I'll ever be able to beat that. 
it's just stress. It's not fun. <laughs> so much 90s. This is Bill and, Ted, Bill and Ted's excellent Game Boy Adventure. There's Keanu Reeves on the front there. Oh, my gosh. Um, this game was another game I was extremely disappointed in. It's not that bad. It's a puzzle game. Sorry, it's a it's a uh, it's a platformer puzzle game, kind of like uh, not unlike the uh, Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle series. And uh, I played, I gave this a fair shot again recently, and it's not that bad. It's just I don't even know what I was expecting. What would you make for a video game for Bill and Ted's excellent adventure? Um, they did okay with the license they had. But uh, what's disappointing about it? I think there's one song in the whole game. <laughs> it's the same background music the whole time. Mostly it's just, it's not a bad game. It's just bland. Like the player sprite, you know, Bill and or Ted that you play as, just look so plain. Like they don't even, they just look like, like generic little video game characters, for example. And it gets really hard pretty quickly. I don't have complicated emotions about that game. All right, let's speed it up. F1 Race is a super popular racing game for the Game Boy that came with the four-player adapter. I think I actually tried the four-player adapter once on a school bus ride. I can't swear to it, but yeah. Um, I've definitely done multiplayer games. Um, it's fun, but I'm really bad at it. I'm not very good at using the boost Use the boost to get through. This is Final Fantasy Adventure. Final Fantasy Adventure is one of the best games for the Game Boy. Um, it's like The Legend of Zelda, but with more magic spells, uh, more characters in your party, uh, more weapons, more story. You, you know, the the, uh, the older games, maybe Zelda 1, Zelda 2, didn't have a lot of dialogue or anything. This game has... Uh, more of that. Oh, and more RPG elements. There's lots of leveling up your items and weapons and health and stuff. <laughs> I, I love this game. Oh, and outstanding music. Ah, uh, brother. Gremlins 2. I bought this because I love the Gremlins movies. Um, <laughs> it's so funny. Like, uh, anyway, I was just thinking about the, the Gremlins is rated PG, the movie, or as I like to call it, 80s PG because 80s PG movies hit differently and as many people know it was the Gremlins movie Gremlins was one of the movies that caused the PG-13 rating in the United States to be implemented anyway uh, so I don't know if I should have saw it at the age I saw it but this game is uh, by Sunsoft I think Sunsoft has a reputation for making games that are stupid crazy hard regardless this game is stupid crazy hard. I was also a little disappointed with this game just because it's so unforgiving. It looks good. It plays pretty good. It sounds good, but it is so unforgiving. Very little, uh, what's it called? Very little invincibility when you get hit. Um, almost no health, almost no way to, to regain health if you get hurt, or when you get hurt. Um, stage four, I've never made it to stage four. If you, I'm sorry, the final stage, there's four stages. If you can make it to stage four, there's an entire section. <laughs> there's an entire section where you can't even see your character. It's hard to describe, but your your character like goes behind a wall, and there's there's still tons of spikes and enemies you have to dodge. They're just invisible. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh my gosh. But anyway, yeah, I played it quite a bit. Try to get my money's worth out of it. Oh yes, here we go. Mega Man, Dr. Wily's Revenge. This is one of my very favorite games of all time. Um, I will often cite this as my... F I love the Mega Man series. I have all the Mega Man Game Boy games. This one, I would say, is my... favorite, mostly for nostalgic nostalgia reasons. And I will replay this all the time, anytime, and have a blast. Great game. It's very hard. So a lot of these games, they're very difficult, especially for little David, little Dave. And uh, so I use the uh, the Game Boy, the Game Genie, uh, to get like infinite life and just casually have fun playing through the game. 
and you know learning it learning how to play the game learning how to beat the stages and then going back and eventually uh, being able to beat it without needing the game genie to use cheat codes all right ninja guide and shadow ninja guide and shadow is uh it is unlike the nes uh, ninja guiding games they basically just put the name on it to sell cart sell games sell cartridges um it is based on the any the more obscure nes game called shadow of the ninja but it's not like that game either it's its own thing um and it is amazing this is one of the best action games for the entire game boy holy cow i love this game it's so good i don't know if there's a th single issue with this entire game it, yeah one of the best games for the game boy i highly recommend it oh i mean uh i've cited the uh, the soundtrack is one of the best best soundtracks for the game boy in another video i did um the graphics are uh some of the best on the console um the difficulty curve is absolutely perfect the first stage is um the first stage is a decent challenge and a lot of casual fun and it just slowly gets you know a little little by little more and more difficult as you play until the, the fifth stage five stages in the game is a good challenge but i'm always able to beat it um yeah <laughs> that's it it's just so good oh i can't gush about it enough oh man what are we 1991 this is a good year for game boy this is operation c also known as you know contra contra for game boy it's an original game not a not a port or anything once again by konami and yeah one of the best games for the system i i will just play through this on loop because when you beat the game you know you keep your high score and you can just start over at stage one again and if i have the time i'll just play through it over and over and over again i've I've spent plenty of time seeing if I could beat it uh, without losing a without getting hit once, without losing a single life, and I'm pretty sure I'm able to do it. I think I'm pretty sure I've done it back in the past, and uh, yeah, so much fun, great music, great graphics. Mm, I could talk a lot about these games. Okay, keep it moving. What is this? Oh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles two. Oh, really? Oh, Ninja Turtles one came out in 1990. Turtles two came out in 1991. All right, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, back from the sewers. This game is also a walking beat-em-up, very similar to the first game, with a couple exceptions. Number one, it's much longer. Number two, it looks even more like the cartoon. Like, it looks like you're playing... Okay, it looks like you're playing... I want to say it looks like you're playing a cartoon show. All right. <laughs> for the game boy in 1991 anyway it looks much more like the characters from the cartoon show really really nice um one of the weird things about this game is as a kid i remember beating it many times on normal difficulty is easy normal difficult a normal difficult you know the normal game nowadays i can't get anywhere close to the end maybe i lost my uh lost my touch in old age i don't know all right moving on to 1992 this is the jetsons in robot panic the jetson there's george jetson on the front this is an amazing game i consider this a hidden gem i really don't often hear people talk about it um it is how did i get this all of my games i either got for christmas for my birthday or i slowly saved up my money to buy another game this was one of the rare times I remember my dad came home from like a business trip and said, hey, I got you a Game Boy game. And I was in shock then. I'm kind of still in shock now because I still don't know why. Like, we just didn't do that in my family. Anyway, I got this game and uh, yeah, it's really good. So once again, they do that thing where, okay, you, you can't choose... How do I put it? It's kind of like Mega Man in the sense that you have to beat all three stages, but you can choose which order you're going to beat them in, um, which is nice. Every time you turn it on, you can start. You can play a, a start on a different stage than last time. Um, after you beat all three, there's wily stages. You know, this it moves on to the the uh, second half of the game, and 
it looks great. Who made this? Taito. Hmm. Okay. I mean, anyway, it's not Konami this time. Um, it looks great. The music is great. The It feels really good to control. Um, and something that's unique about this game is the power-ups. All the members in your family, wow, I can talk a lot about this game. All the members in your family, the family members that you play as, you get to play as each of the family members. And they have uh, different, pretty unique, pretty cool power ups. Like, uh, what is that? A jet pack, a basketball, and something else. It doesn't sound that special when I just list them out loud, but they're kind of unique. I think that they're kind of unique for uh, this kind of game, for the Game Boy. So you got. Anyway, I should talk about it more in detail in another video someday. All right. Good game. Jetsons. The Jetsons. This is Kirby's Dreamland. One of the best games for the Game Boy. Very popular. And, oh, here's something I can say about it that I don't get to say very often. It's my favorite game in the Kirby series. No, really. Like, think of another Kirby game. I like this game better. This was made... <laughs> this was made... Uh, uh, this came out before they uh, thought of the idea to have Kirby uh, uh, gain his enemies' abilities, their powers, by swallowing them. So uh, the only thing you can do in this game is inhale, swallow enemies. Uh, you can spit them back out uh, and use them as projectiles, which I thought was so fun. It's so clever and still the easiest way to play any Kirby game. Um yeah. Oh, I guess you do have some power-ups. You can get, like, the leaf power-ups. So you can just keep spitting air. You can suck in air and fly around. You can dive bomb into enemies from way up high. You can, you can get the fire spitting power-up. Um, uh, so, I mean, one, complete, one complaint people say is that uh, you can't copy abilities. There's no Kirby copy ability because uh, it wasn't invented yet. Uh, in my opinion, I prefer it this way. My, my favorite move, my favorite attack in Kirby's Dream Land is s swallowing enemies and spitting them out as projectiles. The second complaint is that it's too short and too easy. Here's the thing. Almost everyone who says that never played the, uh, the, uh, the extra game, extra mode, hard mode. When you beat the game, which doesn't take too long, they, uh, there's a passphrase on the, on the screen. Uh, <laughs> and a very funny cutscene with King DDD. Uh, there's a there's a code. So next time you're on the title screen, you enter the code. It's something like up a select or something, whatever. It's something super simple, and you get the uh, the bonus game, the extra hard game. It is pretty much a whole new game, and it is very challenging. Uh, I can pretty much guarantee you will get wrecked on stage one. So if you've never tried, if you if you enjoy this game and you, but you think it's too easy. I really recommend uh, hard mode, extra mode. It's a good game. Awesome game. All right. I already talked about Mega Man 1. This is Mega Man 2. This introduced Rush, the dog on the Game Boy. Uh, this game is often considered the... What is it? The weakest in the series. The weakest of the five Game Boy games. And it is... Uh, it, it's still really good. I mean, what is it? It's like, uh, what is it, Pixar movies? Pixar movies are all the best of the best. So when someone says, oh, yeah, this movie is the worst Pixar movie, uh, like, it means it's all the way down here instead of, like, <laughs> it's like a 90 instead of a 100. I don't know. Anyway, regardless, <clears throat> um, the, this Mega Man game, it's a great platformer. What are the complaints? Oh, the music, the music isn't as good. I really enjoy the actually really enjoy the music in this game. It's not as good as the other four Mega Man games for Game Boy. And it's actually really easy, which is a benefit because the other games can be brutally hard if you're not used to them. So this game is definitely the easiest in the but in the bunch. I recommend it. It's a very good platformer for the Game Boy. <coughs> and here's Mega Man 3. This game is I consider the best Mega Man game. So I said Mega Man 1 was my favorite, probably mostly due to, to uh, nostalgia reasons. This one, I think, is the best to pick up and play. 
the one I would, uh, and it's, it's because to put it simply, it's when the series got advanced enough, <clears throat> sorry, uh, advanced enough on the Game Boy to, how do I put it? It's, it's, it's just better everything. The play control, the music, the graphics, the size has all just been polished. Absolutely po polished is the word. Absolutely polished compared to the last two games. The last two games are good. This game is polished to perfection. And uh, But going forward, uh, they start to get too big in my opinion. There's story, dialogue, cutscenes. In, in the next game, Mega Man 4 and Mega Man 5, there is an item shop. There is replaying stages in order to progress. This game is all the Mega Man with none of the fat. Uh, I love this game. <coughs> so this one might be my favorite. <coughs> Metroid 2. Mm, one of my favorite games for the Game Boy and one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, what can I say about this game? It uh, scared me to death and uh, I actually tried to sell it. <laughs> as a kid um and uh but ended up falling in love with it and yet it became uh one of my favorite games of all time it's my favorite game in the metroid series and was one of the reasons i decided that i wanted to make video games when i grew up which i do now as a hobby not as a professional or anything ren and stimpy <laughs> as a child of the 90s i loved ren and stimpy and ren and stimpy space cadet adventures space cadet Adventures, yep, was the first Ren and Stimpy Game Boy game that came out. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Um, I barely played it because I immediately recognized how bad it was as soon as I turned it on. Uh, I do intend to go back and try it out again someday. I'd like to see if it is bad as uh, I remember it being. But man, yeah, whatever. I mean, one of the highlights is when you get, there, there's a recorded voice dialogue, you know, oh joy, <laughs> when you get hurt. So following up from that is <laughs> Super Mario Land 2, considered one of the greatest games for Game Boy. Um, it's, uh, it can be compared to a portable version of Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo. Completely different game, has a similar look, has a similar world map. Uh, it's kind of kooky. It's got uh, Goombas with little Jason masks with knives sticking out of them. Um, you go inside a whale. It's a really good game. I mentioned that I pref actually prefer Super Mario Land 1 to Super Mario Land 2. And that's simply, I, uh, I prefer to replay it. If I had to pick one of these to replay right now, it would be Super Mario Land 1. And the reason being is that I mentioned the difficulty uh, curve. In this game, in the sequel, so much about the game is improved over the first one. The graphics, the... Well, the music's really good in both games. The graphics, the size of the game. Much bigger game. more, m Way more power-ups, more enemies, more types of stages. But in the end... What is it? The game is easy. And some of the power-ups, especially the bunny rabbit ears, make the game even easier. And I'm just cruising through the game. When I replay this, I just cruise through the game. I can fly over some of the whole, some whole stages. Um, and one of the reasons for that is you can go to almost any stage right from the beginning of the game, which means the difficulty curve is almost completely flat until you get to <clears throat> the final stage, uh, Wario's Castle. This is the first game with Wario in it. Uh, when you get to Wario's Castle and suddenly there's a huge spike in difficulty and yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd rather replay the Super Mario Land one. Uh, but still an incredible game, especially if it's your first time playing it. Uh, let's see here. Oh, wow. This is the Sword of Hope 2. This is an RPG, a role-playing game, it looks unlike, it doesn't look like Final Fantasy or anything. This is a role-playing game where you see a small window of what you're looking at in the scene. You get a text description of the scene. 
and you get a list of commands to do. And this game is <laughs> my favorite RPG of all time. Every time I think to myself, I, I've played through it many, many times. It, it is an enormous game, absolutely enormous. I've played through it many, many times. And every time it's been, you know, quite a few years have, have gone past since the last time I played through it, I always think to myself, David, it's the Sword of Hope 2, the sequel. Is it really as good as you remember? And it really doesn't take that long for me to say, holy cow, I really like this game. Um, it is. It has a pretty slow pace. Um, if uh, if you're considering playing this because of my, you know, recommendation, then keep in mind it is slow paced. Um, it, it has random battles. It is imagination. One of my favorite things about this game is that so much of it is. Uh, it just lets my it they, they show this game shows and tells just enough to let my imagination run wild and oh my gosh i mean there's a city in the clouds there's a uh, a village of pixies at the bottom of a lake that you visit there's so much stuff in this game oh i love the ending i love the music okay <laughs> good game ending uh 1992 was a wave race. I bought this game because uh, I did spend a lot of time on the water as a teen. I'm sorry, uh, on a beach. Every summer we'd go to a, uh, a lake with a beach. And uh, I don't know. I always liked the idea. I never had a jet ski or even rode on a jet ski. But I had this. <laughs> and I, <laughs> which I kind of prefer. I preferred playing my Game Boy to actually riding on a jet ski. You're a funny guy, Dave. Anyway. Um, so I'd actually play this next to the water on my Game Boy. And this game is Shigeru Miyamoto, the guy who created uh, Super Mario and Donkey Kong and The Legend of Zelda, is often credited somehow with this game. I think I think he did the I think he produced it. I don't know how much he touched the design or the development. Anyway, uh, this game, I played it a ton. I played this game for hours and hours and hours, for days and days and days, many, many years. And it looks so simple. It's a ra oh, sorry. It's a racing game on jet skis. Uh, it actually supports four players. I've never did four players. I never did two players. Um, but no, it's a, and it looks so simple on the surface, but there is just enough. Once you get into it, there is just enough depth to the control and the gameplay to really really hook me there is you know there's uh the accelerator there's the turbo boost that refills as you're racing there are two different power-ups you can get while racing kind of like uh mario kart style like you run over them and you get a power-up there are whirlpools there are jumps you can angle yourself as you go off the jumps which greatly affects the uh, gameplay there is you know, bumping into the other racers. Uh, there's two different gameplay modes, um, three different speeds in each mode. There is, oh, I said, uh, oh, there's currents. Water pushes you in a direction. Yeah, just enough going on to really, uh, really give this game some good depth, in my opinion. All right, we are coming to the last, oh, 10? 1993, Darkwing Duck. This is also one of my favorite games for the Game Boy. One of the best games for the Game Boy. I talked about Mega Man. This is made by the same company, Capcom. It is, I call this a spiritual successor to Mega Man. It is, it is essentially a Mega Man game from the makers of Mega Man with different characters and a different style of music. Uh, you select your stage. You play through a, a themed stage. You fight the boss at the end. There's different weapon power-ups. Uh, excellent, excellent difficulty level. Good challenge. Not too hard. Not too hard to beat. Uh, outstanding music with a fun uh, kind of uh, noir uh, vibe to it. And uh, great graphics. 
And there's a really cool mechanic where you press the up button on the Game Boy. You press the up button to uh, pull your cape over your face and protect yourself against projectiles. It's really cool. All right, this is Final Fantasy Legend 3, an RPG from the Final Fantasy... I guess it's technically a saga game in the saga series, uh, which is a spin-off of Final Fantasy. I don't know the details. Anyway, people ask me, hey, do you play Final Fantasy? I'm like, yeah, I play Final Fantasy 3, Legend 3 for Game Boy. And then... Anyway, nobody cares to talk about it anymore because nobody really plays... Or relatively few people have played this game compared to the uh, home console games. Anyway, this must have come out... So thinking back, this must have... I must have bought this... What is it? Around the time the... I was using the internet more and more because I remember reading... I wanted a Final Fantasy Legend game. There's one, two, and three. And all three had come out at this point. And I remember trying to decide which one to get. And I remember reading an online discussion post. This must have been dial-up internet. And them saying, uh, oh, they said two and three are really, really good. They recommended it over the first game. And uh, I can't, they said, if you haven't played either of them, then get three, something like that. Anyway, I own a copy, nowadays, I own a copy of Final Fantasy Legend 2. I haven't played it yet. This game I played through multiple times. It has time travel. Uh, it has great music. <laughs> it was a really fun game. Not my favorite RPG. I still, it doesn't beat out uh, uh, the Sword of Hope 2, but it's a very, uh, very good RPG. All right, next up, Jurassic Park. Of course I got Jurassic Park. Um, this game, <laughs> I have mixed feelings about this game. I don't think it's very, how do I put it? I was going to say it's not very good. It's definitely not fair. There are <laughs> limited bullets. There are dinosaurs that will pop out that are almost impossible to dodge. There are, <laughs> there are power-ups that will kill you, and the only way to know not to collect them is to have played the game before and know, oh, this is the one that will kill me. Terrible game design idea. But I played this a ton because I love, love the vibe. It doesn't feel like the movie that I love. It doesn't feel like the book that I love, but it definitely has its own vibe. And I love the vibe of this game. The music is outstanding. I actually made a whole video about the music in this game. Um, I played through stage one many, many, many times because I don't even know if I've beaten stage two. That's where I usually die. There's a stage select code that allows me to just skip to the next stage. And I'm sure I've used Game Genie to play most of it. All right, Kirby's Pinball Land. This is another game I just don't get. <sighs> Very well made. It qu seems quite popular online. Uh, there was a time I just bought every Kirby game that came out. I loved the first game. Then this was the second Kirby game that came out. And uh, it's so well made. And it has so much in it. The, it's a, I'm sorry, a pinball game. Kirby's Pinball Land. Um, and I just never really grasped it. So here's my problem with any pinball game, including this one. I don't get how I'm supposed to be in control. Like, am I supposed to be able to... When I play this game, I enjoy it. And then within like a minute or so, the, I miss the ball it, you know, it gets sent down the uh, the center of the screen, and I miss it with my paddles, my flippers, and then that's it. I lose I lose my ball, and I try again. I never figured out if I'm supposed to be able to find a way. I never found out if there was a way for me to like improve, because this game has was it three stages? I think three stages and a final boss. Each of those three stages has another end boss, so it's. Three stages, each with a boss, and then you fight the, the end boss, King DDD. There's so much game in this game, and I almost never got to see it because I just kept losing my ball. I did use my game Genie and was able to, uh, I think I did see the whole game and was surprised. I was kind of surprised. 
Actually, no, I don't say that. I want to say when you beat the game, it just kind of starts over, which surprised me, but also kind of doesn't, just because, uh, I mean, it's pinball. You're supposed to get a high score. I don't know. I always wanted to get better at it and have more fun with it. This is The Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening. When I got this game, I remember getting it, hopping in the backseat of the GMC Suburban on the ride home, and I watched the uh, I watched the opening cutscene uh, where Link. Well, spoilers. Oh, it's not spoilers. It's the opening cutscene where Link uh, gets shipwrecked on the island, and it blew my mind. Awesome cutscene for the Game Boy. Uh, it's maybe my favorite Zelda game. It's my overall favorite Zelda game of all time. And uh, you know, Link and Marin, the uh, the woman who finds you on the beach, is the best relationship in any Legend of Zelda game. All right, this is the last Mega Man game in my pile in the first 35 Game Boy games I've owned. Mega Man 4. Mega Man 4 is I already briefly talked about it. Absolutely incredible. Long game. Tons of power-ups, lots of to collect. Really, really good. Super high quality. It does. I do kind of get. Uh, it does, in my opinion, gets kind of bogged down with all of the uh, stages you have to replay through and dialogue you sit through. Still a really good game. <laughs> this is Ren and Stimpy Vidiots. This is not a really good game, but still a game that I played all the way through multiple times uh, and really enjoyed. It is kind of clunky. It looks kind of glitchy. It plays kind of glitchy. Um, but I love Ren and Stimpy and uh, had a lot of fun with it. It's uh, At the very least, it's much more fun than the Space Cadet Adventure games. All right, the final three games. This is Speedy Gonzalez. Why did I have Speedy Gonzalez? Because I loved Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, but I had a Game Boy. And uh, it's hard to remember nowadays, but back in the 90s, whoa, fierce, fierce competition between Sega and Nintendo. And the whole the idea of having, uh, I mean, I bought the, uh, the first time a Sonic the Hedgehog game appeared on a Nintendo console was Sonic Advance for the Game Boy Advance, I believe. And I, have a, I bought a copy when it came out blew my mind. I can't believe I'm playing Sonic on a Game Boy, uh, on a Nintendo console. Uh, before that, I bought this game, uh, Speedy Gonzalez. It is decent. I can beat the game. I, I beat it when I was a kid. I beat through it multiple times. Um, but the main reason I got it was because I wanted Sonic the Hedgehog for Game Boy. Uh, <laughs> how similar is it to Sonic the Hedgehog? Um, <laughs> well, Stage one ha literally has a, uh, a loop that you run through, just like Sonic the Hedgehog. And there are ROM hacks of this game. So people have taken this game uh, even like many, many, many years ago and taken out Speedy Gonzalez the mouse and replaced him with a sprite of Sonic the Hedgehog and said, oh, this is Sonic the Hedgehog 4 for Game Boy. And I think they also swapped stage three with stage one so that it starts in like the forest world because Sonic always starts in the woods or yeah, grassland or whatever. Kind of goofy. Um, I don't think I'd recommend it. I'd recommend playing the first stage just to see, oh man, <laughs> this is Sonic. Kind of fun. But the rest of the game's kind of, uh, I don't know. There's better games to play. Go play Ninja Gaiden Shadow. All right, the next game, uh, second to last game, Tiny Toon Adventures. I love Tiny Toon, Adve uh, Tiny Toon Adventures. I watched uh, this cartoon and others every day when I got home from school and loved them. Uh, this game has four worlds. Uh, I, the first world is pretty darn easy. The second world is also pretty darn easy. And it's at that point I always think to myself, why don't I ever play this game more? And then I get to World 3, and man, the difficulty level ramps up real fast. Even so, the first two worlds are quite a bit of gameplay and really fun. Check it out. This game. Oh, is this by Konami? 
it is another Konami game. Incredible music and absolutely gorgeous artwork. They look just like the characters from the cartoon show. Uh, lots of animations. Oh my gosh! And if you want to see something cool, look at the um, check out the the stage. I'm sorry, the World One boss. It's Montana Max. Montana Max is always the bad guy. Uh, Montana Max in the cowboy world. World One is a cowboy cowboy scene, and you fight cow, uh, Montana Max on his horse. And there are the whole battle is an amazing set of special effects. For the Game Boy. If you know anything about how the Game Boy works, uh, go check out that battle. Uh, so the end boss of World 1 in, oh my gosh, Tiny Toon Adventures 2, Montana's Movie Madness. It's so good. The music, uh, uh, it's one of my favorite scenes on, on a Game Boy game. Worth it just to play it uh, just for that scene. All right, last game. It's really nothing special. So <laughs> it's uh, Tasmania by Sunsoft. Now, it's kind of funny. This game is, there was a Tasmania TV show. This is not based on the TV show. This is literally just the Looney Tunes character. Uh, I think in Japan, this game is actually called Looney Tunes 2 Tasmania, something like that. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's a platformer. It has cute sprite work. Um, I've beaten it multiple times as a kid. It's fine. <laughs> it was a game to play. Um, I think I bought it because I really liked how the graphics looked in a magazine. In the magazine, a uh, little article I saw about it. Uh, my least favorite thing about this game is like a very, there's these bonus stages. I think they're, I hope they're bonus stages. They might be just regular stages, but there's these stages where you have to, uh, it's a button masher. I'm sorry. Most of the game is a platformer and a pretty simple, pretty basic, decently entertaining platformer. There's some, there's on, a, on, a, on occasion, every few stages, there is a bonus stage where you have to it's button mash. And you just have to keep smacking the A button over and over until you get to the end of the stage. Uh, if you let go, you lose or you die or something. And it's just miserable. Oh, so this is the, uh, the only game on my list from 1994. 1994, wow. The Super Nintendo had been out by th for like three years at that point in the United States. Yep, I'm still buying Game Boy games. And it was only the beginning. So this is the first 35 Game Boy games I ever bought. It was a little diff tricky making the list. Like, for example, when I originally pulled out Dr. Mario, because Dr. Mario came out pretty early in the Game Boy's lifetime, but then I remembered, wait a minute, I drove myself to the store to buy a copy of Dr. Mario. I couldn't have been, I couldn't have been uh, one of the first 35 games I bought. And it turns out that's because I bought the Player's Choice re-release that came out many years later. And so that one went off the list. But yeah, oh my gosh, if I look through this, uh, this pile of games real quick, I mean, the best of the best, Tetris, Super Mario Land, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Fall of the Foot Clan is kind of a guilty pleasure. It's really good, but I don't think it's everyone's taste. Uh, what have we got here? F1 Race is really popular. Final Fantasy Adventure, I highly recommend. Uh, any of the Mega Man games, so good. Ninja Gaiden Shadow, is it a must play? If you like side-scroller action games, it's really good. And even compared to like the NES games, because uh, once again, it's not a uh, it's not a port, it's not even in the really the same series, but you're still a ninja running around with a sword slashing the guys. It is, uh, I don't know, if you ever thought, uh, man, those NES games, Ninja Gaiden NES games are pretty fun but are brutally hard. Like you definitely should try this Game Boy game. It is oh perfect. Uh, where did I leave off? Operation C, the Contra game. I love it. Uh, I consider it, the Contra games are known for being really difficult. Operation C for Game Boy is, I consider, quite easy compared to the NES games, the two NES games. Uh, maybe just because the Game Boy can't handle that many bullets on screen. Anyway, uh, the Jetsons Robot Panic is worth uh, checking out, kind of hidden gem. Kirby's Dreamland is talked about all the time absolutely incredible metroid 2 my favorite metroid game 
Super Mario Land 2 gets talked about a lot. The Sword of Hope 2. What do I always say? If you're in the mood for a retro RPG, play it until, what do I always say? In The Sword of Hope 2, uh, my favorite RPG, if you're interested in trying it out, play until you get to the desert. It should take less than an hour. That's where I usually recommend, uh, if you want to give it a shot, play until you get to the desert. It should take, I think, less than an hour. And you'll have a really good feel, really, really good feel at that point if, uh, if this game's for you. Uh, yeah, a Darkwing Duck. Darkwing Duck is one of the best uh, action games for the Game Boy. Final Fantasy Legend 3 is great. Man, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. And then some cartoon games. Okay, so how did I do? This is a really good set of games. There's a few games I really want to go back and give it a give them a fair shot again that I really didn't like as a kid, and you know find out if it was if it was me just being young and crappy at these games or if uh, they really just were just the worst. Uh, things like Aerostar, the uh, the auto scroll, the uh, shoot 'em up game, vertical shoot 'em up game. Uh, what else? Oh, I think I've tried Gremlins 2 recently. It's just brutally hard. Nemesis, the Gradius game. I really want to try Nemesis again. Yeah. And I think I'll, oh, and Ren and Stimpy. Ren and Stimpy Space Cadet Adventures. See if that's as bad as I think it is. I kept getting killed by like a toaster. What a weird game. It's a weird show. Anyway, but overall, these are great games. 1991 was a amazing year. I'm just looking at my list right here. Oh, yeah. But anyway, I love the Game Boy. I've had uh, so much fun with it. I'm so glad I kept... Uh, I mean, it's been my favorite video game console ever since I got it. And uh, yeah, I still love playing it today. I still uh, enjoy finding new games that I missed out on as a kid and uh, trying them out. 